a minute in. About a minute in, and uh, we had a lesbian innuendos. Yep, we we got there, boys. Episode two, and we're we're starting this shit up. Uh, at the rate this is going, we'll be on full Fate Khalid levels of what the fuck by episode five. Uh, be prepared. So yeah, uh, this week it is time to talk about Vanguard IF Extra Story episode two. Now, the community reaction from what I could tell from episode one seemed pretty negative. Uh, whatever people were still into the Vanguard anime, this seems to really not be working for them, while the general anime community is just like, what the fuck? Um, so yeah, that's that. Again, as I said, it's only an episode or two in. We should give it time to find its footing. Uh, it might get good as it goes. Uh, I'm trying to be nice. I'm really trying, guys. I'm trying. Uh, I hate when I have to be in the... I hate to be in the, no, being a negative uh, Nancy, and I know I have a tendency to be it a lot, but... Look what they're giving me! <laughs> no, but uh, if I were to pick a positive, I'd say Ibuki is actually pretty good in this. Um, he, he's just so far the bumbling idiot I was afraid he would be, and he's pretty useless. But I think the actor is putting enough into this to make it work and make me somewhat interested in following him. Like, the bit where Ibuki is, like, vanishing, and he's like, what the fuck, what am I doing? The, the deck, the deck, okay, the deck. That is pretty funny. The way he delivers the lines, the way he sort of says it all, I think that worked. I also thought his kind of, like, um reactions to everything Emmy and Shuckle are doing. And yes, I'm still just going to call her Shuckle. Uh, I think that is also pretty funny. I think the actor has a good enough range of going from crazy humor to kind of wordy humor, which is good because the problem Ibuki as a character has always had is that in the original series, he's just kind of stoic and kind of scary looking. And then in V-Series, he's just kind of angry and scary looking. Don't get me wrong, there was stuff I really liked about Ibuki, uh, but for the most part, he's kind of just got the one setting. So to see him kind of go into a comedic direction and to see it actually be pulled off pretty well, I give props to. I also liked his banter scene with Suiko when she's bandaging him up. Uh, if you couldn't fucking tell by that end credit sequence and... Oh, Jesus, that end credit sequence is a bizarre bag of worms all its own. Uh, there seems to be some insinuation of a relationship between the two about to happen. And you know what? Sure, why not? They pull off a banter scene together, and they have more chemistry than our other two characters. We'll get to them in a minute. Uh, so yeah, that is... That's the good stuff. Uh, the rest of the episode is... It's pretty bad. <laughs> So first up, uh, we open with, uh, like I said, Emmy and Chuckles' dialogue. Uh, their voices are still insufferable. They have their transformation sequence, their uh, dating little dialogue scene that happens, little flirty words. They transform into what kind of looks like bakers to me. We get our opening, which is pretty goddamn bad, if I'm being totally honest with you. Uh, and then the fight begins. They summon Blaster Blade! Oh, it's so weird the way she says it. They summon Blaster Blade, and he starts fighting, and he's fighting against a generic uh, stock footage background that they will use a thousand goddamn times to save money. The fight looks bad. There is very little choreography to it. You can almost count the frames of animation. It looks so bad. Uh, and then Shuckle sees the deck and picks up the Gear Chronicles and summons Chrono Jet. And I collectively feel like it is time to throw my uh, computer out the window because good flying fuck, what are you doing? Because now you're taking the thing we want. We wanted Chrono Jet. We wanted the better version of Chrono's character. We wanted some Gear Chronicle action going on here. You made it look like you were giving it to us. You set everything up really goddamn good last season. And this is what you give us. Instead of Chronojet being used the way we want, Chronojet is now being summoned as a really cheap stand for a lame-ass Pokemon battle. And Chronojet shows up, and I'll say this much, he adds a little energy to the fight because he's all whizzing around on his wheels, and that's kind of fun, I guess. But yeah, no, it's a very boring fight, and there's 
really nothing to it at all. Uh, blink and you'll miss it. So then the fight's over, and uh, Ibuki brings up about Aichi, and Emi has a tear, which is so bad because, like, Emmy's voice is not just annoying to listen to, but because it's so over-the-top cute and so over-the-top just adorableness all the time, it's really hard for the actress to emote. Some people can pull it off. Chika in uh, Kaguya-sama Love is War is a perfect example of that, but that has better direction, <laughs> uh, probably a better actor, and also has scripts that work to the strength. All of Emmy's dialogue in this is just very boring and generic. So even if the actress has it in her to do a good performance, there's nothing for her to latch on to. So anyways, then Ibuki returns to the normal world, or as I like to call it, the world I want to be in. Uh, and Emmy and Chuckle go eat sweets because the anime girls always eat sweets. And it's also revealed they have a lair that is like a planetarium with a swing and they sit on it together and they have a weird clock and it's very apparent it's pulling string, it's pulling from the Madoka Magica basket. Uh, just sort of like the idea of, because for the next like five or six minutes, it's this. Just kind of some weird surreal visuals as uh, Takuro's brother gives exposition. And they're trying to make it look like something. But the difference between this and Madoka Magica, and oh Jesus, I'm going to be a weird magical girl anime guy by the time this shit's over. I just know it. The difference between this and Madoka is that Madoka has a very interesting, unique visual style. It also has the direction needed to take advantage of this. So yes, while all the scenes in that franchise of just kind of weird surreal shit can sometimes feel a little self-indulgent, it at the very least is always interesting to look at and keeps my attention. But here, the visual style is bland and generic and the direction follows suit. So therefore, if you're going to waste five minutes on Ibuki playing pool or Emmy and Chuckle about to make out or whatever the fuck that was. It has no impact because there's nothing for me to really look at besides, oh, here's a eight ball going through Emmy's head. Like, that's really all there is to it. And it's pretty terrible. And Emmy's all like, I'm here to save Aichi, but I already talked about the voice and it's bad. Uh, what else was there? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, so then. The next day, they come back, and um, Suiko is all like, Oh, you came back without a fight this time. Don't insinuate one of your biggest problems with the protagonist having no forward momentum is back. So then they go, and so far Suiko is proving to be exactly what I was afraid she was going to be, and just there to be there. We'll see where that goes next episode. We'll save judgment for that. Um, and then, like, uh, Nomu, I think is his name. Sure, whatever. He's gone. They get sucked into the book. We go full isekai without the help of Truck-kun, uh, even though I'd love for Truck-kun to kill everybody. Uh, they go full isekai mode. They're in the other world, and that's where we end. And then we get a end credit sequence that kind of feels like someone was tripping balls. Like, somehow it has boring visuals, but also it just feels fucking weird. Um, it's bad. <laughs> it's very bad. The only interesting thing about this episode is honestly the preview for next week, because next week at the very least looks so fucking horrendously strange, I'll be entertained. But yeah, no, this is bad. <laughs> this is really fucking bad. So yeah, that was episode two. Just what a plan mess. Just fuck off show. Uh, so yeah, that was that. Uh, as for the Vanguard question of the week, uh, the new set is out in Vanguard Zero. It's been out for a few days now. This is the basically Awakening of Twin Blades. What are you playing right now? Are you going for that MLB? Are you going for those Shadows? Are you going for those Novas? Are you going for those Kagero, those Oracles? Tell me about that below, because there's still no real card game stuff to talk about. Tell me about all that below. And as always, click to like, click to subscribe, and join me next week, where hopefully at the very least I can come up with some good jokes. <laughs>